what's up, Cal gang? All right, so we got this problem here, right? We have all these capacitors, and we have three parts to it. So what's this to find the equivalent capacitance of the system? It wants us to find how much charge is stored, how much charge does there is there in this capacitor down here, and then what's the potential difference across this capacitor? So let's go ahead and do all of that, right? So let's start with the, or the, the equivalent capacitance, right? So for finding equivalent capacitance, we want to simplify the system. So our first step in simplifying the system is going to be to combine these three that are in series and then put them all together in one, and then uh, combine them all in parallel to get just one capacitor, basically. So let's do that. Let's start with the series. So starting in the series, right? We know that 1 over C equivalent is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3, right? This is how you do it for series. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the inverse, so it's going to be CEQ is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3, and then multiply that all by negative 1. So I just took the inverse of both sides to get this by like this. So let's just do this now, right? So C equivalent. Okay, let's label this uh, 1, 2, 3. All right, we're going to label this 18, 30, so 1, 2, 3 is equal to 1 over 18 plus 1 over 30 plus 1 over 10 to the negative 1. So then you plug this into your calculator and you get uh, that this is equal to 90 over 17. Over 17. I hope you can read that. Cool, so 19, or 90 over 17. So that's how you do it for the series. So now we want to combine all the parallel together. So for parallel, it's going to be equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. So in this case, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1. So then C equivalent, right, is just going to be equal to the top one, 7.5, plus 90 over 70, which is the equivalent capacitor of this series. We basically just combine this into one capacitor, into just one. So we can put that there. And then the bottom one is 6.5. And we're going to get that C equivalent is equal to 19.3. But nano, okay, nano paradise. There you go, so that's part A. Cool, so let's do part B. Oh, how much energy charge is stored in the system, right? So charge, so what's our equation for charge, right? So we have this equation, capacitance is equal to charge over potential, right? Now we're looking for charge, so let's move the voltage over, or potential over. C is equal to QV, and we, or not QV. Wait, wait, wait. Q is equal to CV is what I meant to say. Right, Q is equal to CV. So we know Q is what we're looking for, is equal to C. So the, the, what we said of the whole system there is what we found. So it's going to be 19.3. And then our potential is what it's given to us, 25. Nice. So then if you do this, you're going to get Q is equal to uh, 482, but this is in nano, right? Nano ohms, right? It's because we use nano uh, Faraday's for the uh, capacitance, so we have to consider that it's going to be all in nano. Nice. So let's do uh, the next part, right? So the next part asks what is the charge? How much charge does the capacitor in this one have? So we're looking at this capacitor, right? How much charge does this capacitor have? So we're going to use the same equation, right? We know the potential is going to be the same because we're in the parallel. The potential is the same in parallel everywhere. So the potential will be the same here as it is here, as it is here and here, but not like within these because those are in series. But we're looking here, right? So it's going to be Q is equal to this capacitance of 6.5 times the potential, 25. Do the math on that. So I'm going to label this Q 6.5 is equal to 163. Nice. Then part D asks, what's the uh, potential difference across this capacitor, right? So what I said, right, the potential difference in parallel is the same no matter which series you're on. So the potential difference across this capacitor is going to be the same as across this capacitor as across these three capacitors. And the potential difference from A to B is 25. So then we know that the potential difference 
across the 7.5 7 is just going to be equal to 25 volts. So there you go. That's how you solve this problem. Not too tricky. Just understanding your series and stuff. And yeah, so if you need any more help with your physics too, feel free to come to me. I got a lot of uh, problems on them. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. So have a good one. Peace.